not many people can admit getting a B-17 for themselves. And uh, I'm just having a great time here in the B-17 called the City of Savannah. Hey everyone, Jared Frederick from Real History here. I'm on a little bit of road trip during my spring break and I find myself now at Fort Pulaski, which is a national park talking about military history here in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, this huge coastal fortification was first constructed in 1829. It took nearly two decades to build and uh, you know it includes something like 25 million bricks and it's just a really impressive structure. Uh, in the spring of 1862, there was a very notable civil war battle that took place here, and I'll be showing you some of the damage that was inflicted during that battle that occurred. Uh, but in regard to our channel, there's also a little bit of Hollywood history associated with this place, because out here in the courtyard, just behind me, this was the filming location for a good portion of the 2011 Robert Redford film entitled The Conspirator which looked at the uh, Lincoln assassination conspirators, Mary Surratt, chief among them. And out here in the courtyard, they constructed a, a number of buildings and components for the set, uh, including the gallows and scaffolding uh, that was part of the film's climactic execution scene. Um, and so there's some real Civil War history here, and then there is some real R-E-E-L. Civil War history to be found here as well. And we'll be taking it to some other places here as we explore Savannah and see some of the other filming locations. So let's go ahead and look around a little bit more. We're now at the Prohibition Museum here in Savannah. And although it doesn't have a direct movie tie-in, you gotta love the vibes if you're enjoying the history scene. And it's very reminiscent of a boardwalk empire. So take out, check out some of these uh, clips that we see here. What do you want? Who sent you? Tell him Gus. Gus! Gus sent you. Gus sent me. Yeah, yeah. All right. Come on. We now find ourselves at the Georgia Railroad Museum here in Savannah, Georgia. And this is the filming location for a favorite historical film of mine, and that is the 1989 classic, Glory. Uh, the courtyard that I am sitting here in front of was used as a primary location for a lot of the training scenes associated with the history of the 54th Massachusetts, most notably perhaps the scene where the men of the 54th famously tear up their paychecks uh, in defiance to the pay inequality in the United States Army at that time. Uh, so we're going to wander around here and see if we can spot any familiar scenes and sights as we explore. So for fans of the movie Glory, you may undoubtedly recognize this space. Uh, this is the mechanics building here at the Georgia Railroad Museum, but for the purposes of filming Glory in the spring of 1989, some of you may recognize this as the mess hall. And so this is where some key scenes in the movie take place. And it's just so cool because there's so many layers of history that can be found here, both industrial uh, and cinematic. Uh, and so there's uh, a lot of overlapping stories to be found within these walls. And the making of the movie Glory is just one of them. We are now at the Mercer Williams House in the historic district of downtown Savannah. This grand home here behind me was built circa 1860, although the Civil War halted its construction. It's just this magnificent structure uh, that has withstood the various tests of time. And for our purposes, it fits in very nicely with the scope of our channel. There have been a number of movies that have fil been filmed here. 
Um, and perhaps one of the most famous of them is the Clint Eastwood film that came out in the 1990s based on the book of the same name, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. And indeed, it was in this very house in 1981 that one of Savannah's most infamous and famous and even celebrated murders, you could say, took place here in this home. Portions of the Clint Eastwood film were also shot here. Um, and there are also a number of notable films from the 1980s as well. Here on the very steps behind me, some of you may recognize this scene or this setting from the 1989 movie Glory as well. And uh, it's here where Matthew Broderick and Carrie Elways uh, come down where they determine that they are going to become officers in the 54th Massachusetts. Andre Brower comes right down to this fence and informs them that he is going to be the first volunteer of their regiment. And uh, the, the neighborhood around here just has this incredible historic ambience. And uh, I'd like to uh, take you around to the side of the house and show you some uh, additional components of all of it. I would be remiss though if I didn't tell you that two other movies were also filmed here in the 1980s, although slightly less celebrated. And those movies were Swamp Thing and The Swamp Thing Returns, not quite in the same caliber as the movie Glory. Now, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, the famous murder of Danny Hansford, uh, purportedly committed by uh, Jim Williams, the man who owned this magnificent house and restored it throughout the 1960s, uh, took place on the first floor of this structure, although on the other side of it. And uh, Jim Williams himself, likewise, died in this building about eight and a half years later after he had been put on trial four times for that murder. Um, the room that really caught my interest, though, was the one here behind us, um, because some of the interior scenes for the movie Glory were shot in this room and uh, there was a, a party, if you will, in some of the opening scenes of Glory in which Matthew Broderick's character of Shaw returns to Boston. And uh, in the room here behind me, um, unfortunately we weren't, we weren't able to film inside the house at all, uh, but you might notice some of the, the pocket door shutters uh, located here behind me, and it's those shutters that are closed um, in a scene between uh, Broderick and Brower, in which uh, Broderick's character is is startled uh, by the background sound, uh, perhaps as uh, evidence of some of his uh, recent battlefield traumas. Uh, if we continue to walk down here, uh, a little bit further down the sidewalk, in this room that you see here behind me, uh, this is the scene in which Governor Andrew and the character of Frederick Douglass offer Shaw command of the 54th Massachusetts. And so it was really cool to step inside some of these spaces, not only see a historical building, but see where some really cool historical films have likewise been shot over the years. So here we are at the Mercer Williams House, downtown Savannah. Be sure to come check it out. So I, I just finished touring the interior of this magnificent plain that is named the City of Savannah. Uh, and so here in Savannah, there is fundraising done and they named a B-17 after the city. Uh, this is not the original. The original crashed, but this one is recreated in its honor. Um, and so there were thousands of these flying over the flak-filled skies of Europe during World War II, but as it turns out, this aircraft also has some ties to cinematic history as well. You may notice the ball turret that is located uh, on the, the bottom portion of the plane. And as it turns out, that ball turret was used as a prop in the motion picture Memphis Bell about one of the first bomber crews to complete their 25 missions. And so that ball turret was occupied by actor Sean Astin in the making of that film. And interestingly enough, Sean Astin's character in that movie was an amalgamation of a real life personality who actually hails from my hometown. And that real life ball turret gunner, his name was Cecil Scott the real-life ball turret gunner on the Memphis Bell. And so, interestingly enough, I have this sort of a hometown connection to that ball turret through a movie, no less. Uh, and so Hollywood does indeed work 
in strange ways, especially when it comes to public history sites such as these. So, a really cool artifact, suffice it to say. And uh, certainly gives you some great perspective as you crawl through these narrow passageways and you wonder what planes like this went through. Bay. Oh, I'm too fat. I can't fit. Ah, uh, people in the Eighth Air Force were way thinner than me. Uh. Oh, hope I didn't rip my suit. This is not your average tourist view. This is quite a treat. Here we're standing in the midst of a gallery dedicated to the various bomb groups that were within the 8th Air Force. And there's just so many fantastic artifacts to be found here. And each one of these items has such a pertinent and compelling human story. Amidst these bomb group galleries, here is a case dedicated to the 100th bomb group. And of course, this bomb group is the focus of the forthcoming Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg miniseries, Masters of the Air. And the artifacts within these cases are from individuals whose characters are soon to become famous because of this cinematic product, I have no doubt. And uh, the one I decided to uh, focus on here is the chocolate brown Class A uniform jacket of Captain James R. Brown. And he was in a B-17 that was named Torchy. And uh, his red-headed wife was the inspiration behind that name. And on one of his missions, September... 1943, he was wounded by a piece of flak in the nose of the plane, and sure enough, what we see down here is that piece of flak, his various medals that he receives for his service, including the Purple Heart that he receives in recognition of that wound from that piece of shrapnel. And so all of the items in here, the leather jackets, the photographs, the medals, this is soon to become the stuff of legends, even more so than perhaps it already is. So here we are, a fine display dedicated to the 100th Bond Group. I'd be remiss to mention if I didn't say that there are actually two movies called Memphis Bell. And the first one was a War Department documentary by the acclaimed filmmaker William Wyler. Uh, and so much of this footage was filmed on these various B-17 missions from largely the perspective of the Memphis Bell crew. And over here to the right of this very colorful, wonderful Technicolor movie poster, we see a signed photo from the skipper of the B-17 Memphis Bell. I believe one of the officer characters to be featured in Masters of the Air is this guy right here, whose medals we see, and that is Major John C. Egan. And Egan was one of the first air execs for the 100th Bomb Group. And perhaps even more interesting, over here right beside it, he is featured in a photo in this Fez cap, which he picked up in his travels to North Africa when his squadron was uh, running a mission there. And you see a really cool artifact here with a lot of personal character. We couldn't think of a better place to conclude our explorations of Savannah than right here at Chippewa Square because uh, pretty much right where I am, is the spot where the famous bench from Forrest Gump 
was located. The bench is no longer here. If you want to see it in person, you have to go to the Savannah History Museum. Uh, but right here on the very spot that I am standing is where we first heard the words, box of chocolates. Uh, so we hope uh, accordingly that this uh, exploration of Savannah has been just as sweet for you in that regard as it has been for me. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Real History. We'll see you next time.